Hello, uh, greetings and salutations. How you doing? Man, I hate winter. I really hate it. <laughs> winter sucks. Winter sucks dead bunny rabbits. It's time to go to Florida. Um, <laughs> um, can't believe I haven't made a video exactly like this before, and nobody else in any of the other photography channels have. Um, before I make this video, I have to post a disclaimer, because if I don't make this disclaimer, then people will complain vociferously. Uh, there is what you can do with something, and there is what you should do, or what is easiest, right? Kind of like you could drive a thousand miles in one of those little tiny smart cars, you know, it's like the size of a clown car, beep beep. But would you want to? Would that be most ideal? I could like make my way to Florida by crawling on uh, my knees and my hands, but it would be slightly less than ideal. Yeah? So there's what you can do with something. Yeah? Kind of like chopping down a tree with a hand axe. You could do it, but people will stare at you. It's like, you know, you'd probably chop down that tree like 10 times quicker if you used a real axe, right? So let's make that disclaimer. And a distinction between what you can do and what is ideal or best, you know? Yeah, so um, uh, FX uh, versus DX, and I'm going to do a final mention on medium format. Um, what is FX? And I've got plenty of full-frame cameras, plenty of crop sensory cameras, and medium format, and I grew up with medium format. Um, photography, which always has been my favorite, and of course it still is my favorite, but it's obviously not ideal for some things. Um, however, Fujifilm did create the world's first crossover medium format camera for sports action and has IBIS, but we're not talking about that. What is FX camera good for as far as photography genres? It is best for, okay, in other words, where it excels at for the money, wedding photography, okay, portraiture, Obviously so portraiture. Why for portraiture? Let's talk about that in a second. But wedding photography, portraiture, architecture, and landscapes. Yeah, exactly. Wedding photography, portraiture. Talk about portraiture for a second. Let's just make a perfect analogy. You have to get the exact same type of bokeh out of, for example, an 85 millimeter f1.8, which is a pretty cheap full frame lens. You have to use, and here's a perfect example, the Fujifilm 56 millimeter shot at f1.4 or f1.2. Now, is crop sensor perfectly fine for portraiture? Obviously so. My buddy in Paris, France, uh, he uses that for high-end fashion photography for Vogue and Elle. He uses a Fujifilm X-T3, which is a crop sensor camera. So before you complain too much, once again, we are talking about what you can do and what is best for. He prefers that because obviously he has no issues with uh, uh, lens calibration since it's a mirrorless camera. Several other factors that he actually likes that camera for. Um, from as uh, so far as I know, that's what he uh, still uses. Um, so for portraiture, you actually are squeezed into a box, a much tighter box, for getting the job done easily. I mean, shooting at f1.4 and having to buy a really obnoxiously expensive crop sensor lens, like, not obnoxiously expensive, I mean, it's expensive lens, like a 56 millimeter f1.2. You have to shoot that at f1.4 or f1.2 to get the same bokeh you do out of a very inexpensive, like $400, um, 85 millimeter 1.8 uh, uh, G series lens shot at f1.8. You got more elbow room there. The lenses are cheaper. The lenses are also a bit larger, but we're not talking about larger versus smaller. Um, landscape photography, obviously, so medium format will beat the hell, beat the pants off of uh, crop sensor or full frame, but we're not talking about that right this second. So for landscape photography, it should become abundantly obvious, right? For shooting wider field of views, you ha actually have to have less complex lenses that the really ultra wide, like the Fujifilm uh, 8 to 16 millimeter. Incredible lens. I own it. I own tons of wide angle lenses. Nikon, for example, doesn't matter if you hate or love Nikon, for wide angle lenses for architecture and landscape, but specifically for landscape, Nikon owns everybody's butt. They do. It's not my opinion or a feeling, it's a fact. Their 20mm 1.8G is just an incredible lens. You stick that on an Nikon D850 
Wow, what a freaking incredible landscape lens. So full frame does dominate for landscape. It absolutely does. Can you do perfectly awesome landscape photography with a crop sensor camera? Yes, you can. Once again, we got this perfect analogy of like, you know, driving a thousand miles and like uh, a Camry or a RAV4, you know, with some comfort, with some elbow room, yeah. Or driving a thousand miles in one of those little clown cars, you know, those little smart cars, you look at them, you're like, oh man, that is like a death trap on the road. You can do it, but it's not ideal. The nature by which, where in which, ultra-wide-angle lenses, be it zoom or prime for crop sensor lenses, are A, more difficult to design, more expensive, the 8-16mm, to 16 millimeter, and is an abundantly expensive lens. It's absolutely awesome. Fujifilm now is actually second right after Nikon for uh, ultra-wide-angle uh, uh, lenses. Actually, Tamron dominates Nikon now with their 15-30. to 30. Incredible lens. I mean, there's another perfect example. Just an amazing lens. So this is where full-frame dominates. Wedding photography for portraiture, architecture, and landscape. Now, where in, and we have to make a special box here for FX lenses, why do they absolutely dominate the hell out of everything else for real estate and architecture photography? And the answer for that is a half that is full frame, which I'm talking about wide angle lenses are best. I just got done talking about that, such as landscapes. Also, too, for interior architecture and real estate, but, but specifically because of tilt shift lenses. And this is also why full frame is best. It doesn't matter what medium format camera you pick, there ain't, and like Fujifilm has no tilt shift lenses for their medium format. They're working on one, I know for a fact, but it doesn't matter what medium format camera system you got. Every any full frame camera, specifically Nikon, but actually the best tilt shift lens is the Canon 17 millimeter, but uh, full frame owns everybody's butt, doesn't matter who makes it, full frame owns everybody's butt when it comes to architecture, interior real estate, because of tilt shift lenses, and also too for product photography. Uh, due to tilt shift, we actually have perspective control with your tilt shift lenses. I have quite a few tilt shift lenses, um, I hope to get here sometime in the near future, the new Nikon 19mm tilt shift lens, which is unbelievable. I've tested it extensively. However, it is $3,000 lens, but it is worth it um, if you're using it to actually make money. You're doing real estate interiors for corporate, event, uh, for corporate photography, which basically means, in, in my case anyway, doing interior and exterior shots. Um, where the actual verticals don't converge, yes, you could do that in post-production, but you also have to crop out the shot to do that. Um, for uh, for uh, website uh, photography for a uh, business's uh, website. And that actually is a really good paying gig. It's really easy and I actually love uh, doing that. And I actually currently use a 24 millimeter perspective control Nikkor on the Nikon D850 for that because Fujifilm does not have a tilt shift lens for their medium format. I, I know that's coming down the road. So this is where full frame owns everybody. Because of tilt shift lenses for architecture and interior and real estate, that's it. Full frame owns everything. Doesn't matter who makes the FX or medium format camera. Canon and Nikon specifically, and Canon does have the best tilt shift lens. Even though I'm not a big fan of Canon, some of their glass is awesome. That lens is really awesome, by the way. A lot of people actually adapt that lens. Um, the reason why, too, you can't, can't adapt uh, modern tilt shift lenses to uh, like uh, Fuji mirrorless is because uh, the aperture is by wire. There's no aperture you could turn down. Because of the nature of the tilt shift lens and how it twists itself like a pretzel, the aperture closes down electronically. So it cannot be used except fully wide open, which basically makes it useless. Adapted. You can adapt it, but you can't close down the freaking aperture. Um, Obviously, sub so DX uh, sits right in the middle. It is that Goldilocks thing of, you know, not too hot, not too cold. I mean, that's kind of a crude analogy, but I mean, you know, because you already have a DX camera, you know, what the hell you could do with it, which is basically everything. Um, I also wanted to make a point. Uh, also, where uh, FX is best for image more and more for the place where FX reigns. Yeah, tilt shift. I just got done talking about uh, tilt shifts. Um, Oh, yeah, also, too, yeah, this is where I wanted to get on to at the, uh, the last leg here, reading through my extensive notes uh, here on the pad, just some actual breast notes for this video, is that uh, the very same places where full-frame cameras are best for is the exact same place where medium format is best for, except much, much more so. I mean, when it comes to architecture, 
Uh, I mean, exterior, excuse me, uh, landscape uh, photography or exterior architecture. I mean, medium format. I don't care which medium format it is that you want. Basically, Fujifilm owns everybody's butt on uh, medium format now, of course. But, I mean, for landscape, I mean, there's just... You don't even have a brain if you tell me your full-frame camera is as good or better than a medium. It just, you don't, you're clueless. You have no idea what the hell you're talking about for for uh, landscape photography. Oh my God, medium format just kicks ass. Um, for portraiture also, um, there is a lack of uh, sufficient tilt shift lenses. I mean, Hasselblad, which I can't stand their medium format, I mean, nothing. I mean, to hell with them, nothing there. Um, phase one, I mean, you really gonna dish out $50,000 for phase one and like a, you know, a seven, how much is their cheapest tilt shift lens? Like seven or $8,000, oh no. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, once Fujifilm comes, and I do use a, a shift lens, an old 28 millimeter PC Nikkor that is adaptable, and it works quite well with very little vignetting on my GFX uh, medium format cameras, and uh, that's a really awesome sharp lens that actually works perfectly on my Fujifilm GFX cameras, but that is where medium format owns everybody for landscape, for portraiture. Now, I know it's big, I know it's heavy relative to your DX or FX cameras, but you haven't got a chance in hell of uh, telling me or trying to convince me or anybody else that knows what the hell is going on that that anything you got is going to be better than a perfect portrait lens, uh, a medium format portrait lens on a medium format camera. I mean, it owns that. So this is the uh, distinction. People really are confused, and I like making videos that nobody's made before, and I've not made a video specifically like this, and neither the rest of these other uh, knuckle draggers, uh, knuckle knuckleheads on YouTube and their photography channel say, so, you know, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. You know, where is it that you feel like it had all the money in the world and a table full of medium format and crop sensors and the best full frame cameras? I don't give a damn what full frame camera it is that you want to pick up. I'd pick up a D850, however, but whatever floats your boat. It's like, this is it. This, you know, there's just no question. I'm going to go do this job, and I'm going to pick up this full-frame camera. Wedding photography for portraiture. Now, if you had, of course, a medium-format camera, and it's going to be something simple, but, I mean, part, part, of wedding when, part of wedding photography is obviously portraiture. Medium format is slow, you know, uh, obviously slow compared to full-frame. And, of course, it's bigger and heavier. Um, but, like, if you're going to do a wedding, you're going to grab a pair of full-frame cameras. It's just period. I mean, that, that's it. That's not saying that DX can't do the job wonderfully. But, you know, it's what you can do and there's what you should do. Uh, for architecture, uh, interior, exterior, because of tilt-shift lenses, full-frame owns everybody and everything. Period. For landscape photography, you know, I'm going to grab my medium-format camera and my 23mm wide-angle lens. I mean, that's it. But I mean, something that's more compact with more versatility. There's no denying that full frame has more versatility than medium format. No medium format camera system has ever had a big pile of lenses, like full frame or crop. So, you know, there's a big pile of X lenses, a big pile of uh, Nikkor F mount lenses, and you know, a huge pile of Canon full frame uh, lenses uh, for, their, for their mount. Medium format has never had that much because medium format is only for that narrow spectrum of architecture, product, corporate photography, and uh, landscape. And it's never needed that many lenses, which kind of makes medium format, in a way, cheaper than full frame, believe it or not, especially when you've got the cheaper Fujifilm cameras. But that's the actual distinction with the difference between full frame and crop sensor cameras. You know, if you had your choice of anything, and you knew what the hell the difference was, like I do, what the hell would you pick up? For wedding, it's going to be a pair of full frame cameras. For architecture, um, interior or exterior, it's going to be a full frame camera. Uh, for simplex landscape, by simplex I mean easy, run and gun, you know, you know something that you, it's not going to bog you down. However, the GFX50R is a pretty small camera. It's smaller than my Nikon D850. It's not big at all. Um, medium format is big, but I mean, the GFX50R is not a big camera. So it's not a burden to actually pack one in a backpack if you're going to do like some landscape photography in Switzerland or something, which by God, I wish the hell I was doing. I wished I would, and I wished I could take a month off and go to Switzerland or the coast of Norway in the summertime, and I would just bring two cameras with me, and they, one of them would be the X-T3, and the other one would be the uh, GFX. I'd be using the GFX like 99% of the time. 
but there is the actual real world distinction with the difference um, between uh, fx and dx. Because I get asked this question all the time. You can do everything with a DX camera. The question is, is it best? Is it most ideal? And uh, that is the uh, separation spectrum of a full frame between full frame, medium format, and uh, crop sensor cameras. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, please click the link below. Tell me if I could help you and send me an email. If I could help you, thank you so much. Looks veritas, as I say in Russia. Большое вам спасибо. И увидимся. Нечего страшного. <laughs> Thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.